So I think that's all really great because I completely agree with you. I know that we need gun reform and what happened in El Paso was a complete tragedy to myself included. Um, but how do you plan to do this? Like what kind of plans, what kind of reform do you have? How would you get the opposing side to agree to participate in the buyback program? Can I ask about that? Let me follow up on that comment, no. if, I, if you don't mind me backing you up on this one. No, you're fine. Um, because the congressman has a very robust plan on his website. I mean, yes. he has a very detailed plan on his website. But I think the second part of Connie's question is important, which is how do you persuade people who, aren't, aren't, who are not already persuaded like she is? And I want to go back to what you said at the September debate where you said, hell yes, we're coming for your AR-15s. You won the moment. You won the moment. But in some ways, did you hurt the cause, because you just got people's backs up. I mean, you can tell that people are already fundraising on this. A, a state rep said, basically dared you to come get his gun. Mm -hmm. So what about it? Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. The, the day after that debate, I was still in the Houston area, and a gentleman stopped me in a convenience store, and he said, look, Beto, I'm as Republican as they come. I own an AR-15. I will likely never vote for a Democrat, including you. But what you said on that debate stage last night is exactly how I feel and precisely what I think this country needs to do. I don't need my AR-15 to hunt. I don't need it for self-protection in my home. Uh, it's fun to shoot at, at the range, but I agree, this is part of, of the problem, and I would gladly sell it back. I'm just so surprised that anyone had the guts to actually say this. When I talked to families who lost a loved one in, in gun violence, and we were just in Denver, um, listening to families who had lost a loved one in the Aurora movie theater shooting, for example, they also said, I, I'm so surprised that you said what has been on our minds and in our hearts and what we had hoped somebody would say, but feared that no one would, would ever utter, especially on a debate stage while they're running for president. What I found from that gentleman in, in Houston, Texas, that Republican, the families in Denver, is that the political will is there. And they just polled, actually, in Texas last week, found that 49% of people in our state, this proud, but I would argue responsible gun-owning state, believe in a mandatory assault weapon buyback. Only 36% of Texans, this okay. is Texas, oppose that. So um, to your question, Michelle, I, I really think the, the public sentiment is there, the popular will is there. It's just looking for leadership that will reflect that. Okay. I think we provided that. Ruben, you have a follow-up on that? Uh, I do. Um, the question I have is, how would you get around the Supreme Court rulings? I mean, you've got the D.C. versus Heller, uh, which uh, it began to federalize, or actually applied it to D.C., the Second Amendment, and then you have the McDonald versus Chicago, which basically said that the Second Amendment is incorporated to all states. Mm. And so it would seem as though the courts would probably rule against something banning the AK-47, the AR-15s, mm. and a mandatory uh, buyback program would seem to be deemed to be unconstitutional. And as late as 2016, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals also included assault rifles to be part of the arms that are protected by the Second Amendment. So, How would you be able to get around that? Yeah, in fact, your colleague, uh, Congressman Cuellar, who uh, represents, you know, the districts who said in the middle of the state going up to, yeah. and, you know, we talked to him about this the other day. He's a Democrat. I mean, it's true he has an A rating from the NRA, but he says that the his understanding is that the Constitution doesn't discriminate among weapons. So, to Ruben's point, of, of course, the, the Constitution discriminates uh, amongst weapons, and you have no lesser conservative light than former Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia, who made the case that the Second Amendment, like every constitutional guarantee and right, is not unlimited. You couldn't drive a tank, for example, down the street under the Second Amendment or shoulder a bazooka. Yes. Um, this AR-15 or, or AK-47, these weapons were designed engineered, sold to the militaries of the world for use on a battlefield. They're, they're excellent at killing people efficiently, effectively, in as great a number as possible. In under three minutes in a Walmart in El Paso, Texas, 22 people were killed. When the Second Amendment was adopted and, and ratified, it took three minutes to reload your musket. I don't know that the founding fathers, the framers of the Constitution, those who pursued that Second Amendment and got it ratified could have envisioned uh, a weapon designed for war, for use on a battlefield, whose high impact, high velocity round, when, when
when it hits your body, it expends all of its kinetic energy inside of you to destroy your insides. And I've met with the trauma surgeons at Del Sol and UMC, many of whom have served at William Beaumont Army Medical Center and have been deployed in Iraq and Afghanistan. They say these are wounds of war. Congressman, with all due treating. respect, I don't think that answers the question. I think everybody understands your passion about the issue, but the question is, with the conservative courts, not just the conservative Supreme Court, and conservative lower courts, yeah. which has been an intentional uh, project of the Republicans in Congress for years, uh, how what, what do you get question? around is, is the, the understanding? Question, is the question whether or not this is constitutional? Yes. My answer is yes, and I just made the case. Oh. Is the question, should we not pursue public policy or legislation for fear of the current composition of the courts? My answer to that is no. Do the right thing while you have time to do the right thing. And I think every American understands the distinction between a hunting rifle or a shotgun or a handgun that you have in your home for self-defense and something that was designed and is devastatingly effective at doing it to kill people on a battlefield. That is what an AR-15 and an AK-47 is. As, as we now know, the majority of America supports this proposal, a plurality of Texans in what is thought to be a very red and certainly a very proud gun-owning state support this proposal as well. So I, I know that this is the right thing to do. I know America supports this. You have a very good question about what is its fate uh, when it is challenged in the courts of law. We don't know. Um, um, but but fear of that uncertainty shouldn't prevent us from doing the right thing for all of those Americans whose lives we want to save in a country that loses 40,000 people a year to gun violence. No other country comes close.